All right, now away we go. Today's dial-in directions are also in the chat box, so if you have any difficulties whatsoever, if, for example, you're logged in through your PC or laptop and you lose access to the presentation or you lose um, internet connectivity, uh, the dial-in information is posted as well, if you lose sound, anything like that. So today's webinar is webinar number three for spring 2019. It's the third one in a series, and we'll keep these coming uh, to you until uh, the end of the school year. Today's agenda, we'll be talking about Google Sheets basics a little, talking about working with MS Excel files, CSV files, sharing tips, and then talking a little bit about add-ons, maybe a few more tips, and then I've built in some time for question and answer. So if you have any questions, um, if you want to send some messages about your favorite tips, then I've built some time in for that. Today's webinar has been designed for K-12 teachers, K-12 school and district level support staff, and school administrators. You don't need any real deep knowledge of Google Sheets or spreadsheets. It can be helpful, but it's not really necessary. So let's talk about a few Google Sheets basics so that you can benefit from some of the tips and strategies in today's webinar. So um, most of us, when it comes to spreadsheets, we feel like we're starting out with a lot of problems and then we end up with problems with more problems and then more problems within a spreadsheet. So it's really, really critical and it's important that we become comfortable working with spreadsheets. They're everywhere. We have data in so many different systems in our district. So accessing Google Sheets and becoming comfortable with Google Sheets as an application is really becoming an indispensable skill for our everyday work. So accessing Google Sheets is not really difficult. We need to get into Google Chrome and be sure to access Google Sheets one of the three ways that you can get there. You can get there by going to sheets.google.com, just typing that into your Chrome browser. Um, it also helps if you are logged into a district or a personal Google account, or you can go to Google Sheets through Google Drive. So I'm going to switch out of my presentation and go live um, for a moment just to demonstrate so you can go in through Google Drive by hitting the new button. You can go directly to Google Sheets by going to sheets.google.com. And I'll show you why that's a great way to enter Google Sheets a little bit later. Or you can go in using the waffle that's on the right side when you open your Chrome browser. And if Sheets is not one of your applications that's at the top of your waffle, scroll down, hit more, and you'll probably see it there. Now, another resource that I recommend is to the Google Sheets cheat sheet. And this cheat sheet can be found on the G Suite Learning Center. Now, I know that there are a lot of um, Google cheat sheets that are out there, but I really like the ones that are published at the G Suite Learning Center specifically because these are the cheat sheets that come directly from Google. These are the cheat sheets that are going to be updated every time Google releases new additions of their applications and new features to their applications. So I really like this one. It may not be the cutest one that you'll see out there, but it will cover all of the basic functions of Google Sheets. And so if you like having directions that are written down, then you'll really enjoy um, the G Suite Learning Center's cheat sheets and especially the one about Google Sheets because um, you'll see everything is basically labeled for you, step-by-step -step directions. 
and, um, and images as well. If you like the Google um, cheat sheet that you find at the G Suite Learning Center, you may also enjoy installing the G Suite training extension. So if you're new to Google Sheets, don't worry. Everyone starts somewhere. And one place that you may want to begin in your pathway to becoming a proficient with Google Sheets is to get some help on the side right within Google Chrome and right within your Google Drive. So on the slide that I'm on, you'll see the second link that I have on this slide will take you to the G Suite training extension. So this will take us to the Chrome Web Store. And if you add the G Suite training extension to your Chrome browser, you'll see that it'll ask you a few questions. And just like that, G Suite training has been added to Chrome. Now the beauty of this is, and let me make sure that everything is working. All right, it's turned on. Is that when I'm in Google Sheets and I open up a Google Sheet, I've now got this little icon at the top, it's a circle with a question mark in it, and it will start telling me what's new in Google Sheets. So what has Google just released? I can uh, click here if I want to find out about the newest release releases in G Suite, or I can just move forward and go to G Suite training. And what um, you'll see what happens is that when you're in an application, it's really intelligent. It figures out which one of the G Suite programs you're in. And it will start giving you videos and tips and help for the G Suite program that you're working in. OK, there it is. It's up. So now it will give me a basic introduction to Google Sheets. Google Sheets is the spreadsheet editor that is part of G Suite. While it does many of the same things as other spreadsheet programs, there are some characteristics of Sheets that help you to increase your productivity and create greater flexibility. So everything you need to know about Google Sheets, um, you will be able to access that within the G Suite Training Center extension. Once you have that installed, um, you can get uh, videos and a whole lot more. It's really intelligent. It figures this out is where the you Sheets are. Sheets editor home screen. While Google Drive shows you all your files of all types, the Sheets home screen is just for your spreadsheets. And the nice part about the G Suite training extension is that you can use it when you need it and turn it off when you don't. All right, so I'm going to pause for a minute and let you go back to the um, slide deck, grab that hyperlink, install the G Suite Training Center extension if you're um, interested. And then I've got um, a question coming in about how to get the cheat sheet. The um, Google Sheet Cheat Sheet Help is on the G Suite Learning Center. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that URL in the chat box. Also, if you're just joining in, be sure to grab the tiny URL that's in the chat box, and it'll help you get the presentation and all of today's hyperlinks. So on this slide, you'll see kind of an overview of the basic skills. You'll want to practice with opening up a sheet, rename a sh renaming a sheet, entering text, formatting text, all of the skills that you see here. I've got a practice sheet if you want to uh, practice along with me. You'll see that it opens and it allows you to make a copy of the sheet for yourself. So don't worry that you're messing up um, a Google sheet that someone else needs to use or that you're, um, if you delete something, if you type over something, that's perfectly fine. There are some. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the other uh, lesson.
characteristics of sheets of the you... uh g suite training as you see it came on for me automatically and again you have the option to go through that lesson or turn it off if you don't need it but you do want to get comfortable with the basics making sure that you know how to do things like resizing um, columns which is really easy if you go in and grab a column in between columns and resizing. Be sure that you feel okay about doing things like um, resizing or moving data around. So if you come up to the top of the letters, you can resize columns. If you move over to the left side and you grab the numbers or in between the two numbers, you'll notice that the cursor changes and now you can resize things. Uh, take this basic sheet and practice creating simple charts. Go to insert, chart, and practice moving the chart around the sheet and adding information to the sheet. So just click inside, select your information, and then adding your series. And populating your, your chart. So I'm going to pause for a minute. I do have a question coming in about the URL for today's presentation. I'm going to go ahead and I'll post that on the URL. Again, so that you can get the uh, the document with all of the slides and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna lock you in today. Okay, that's fine. Turn the light off while you're over there too, so I don't have to do the good up. I'm gonna lock you in. All right, I'm good. All right, so you may be able to see now that I've got the URL posted again. And if you scroll up in the chat box, you're going to see that it's also posted. All right, a couple other things that you'll want to feel comfortable doing um, once you get comfortable doing things like creating charts is that you'll want to be able to sort so in your spreadsheet you'll want to be able to take and select a column of data and then go to the data command and sort your um, sheet based on the values in one column based on the student first name or maybe based on um, the top number of uh, 
quizzes passed. Now, when I sorted, notice that my column headers moved along with my values. So another skill that I listed is that you want to be able to freeze your headers in a Google Sheet. And to do that, you'll see I, I selected them. And then go to View, Freeze, and I'll freeze my top row. So when I sort again, the second time, you won't see my column headers jumping all around. So grab a copy of that sheet and, um, and practice with this. And if you mess something up again, just make another copy of it. So now I can go back to data and sort my sheet, and now my column headers don't, don't move. Once you get comfortable with things like freezing, sorting, you'll also realize that you can do things like filtering your sheet. And if you mouse around, the nice part about Google Sheets is that it always tells you what you're mousing over so you know what's going to happen before you start clicking. So I'm going to come over to the three dots and find the filter command. And I can set up a filter on this specific spreadsheet so that I can just look at data for a specific student. And just pull up that view and notice that the chart changes as well. So again, to do that, come over to the three dots for more commands and find the filter command. Click it. Filter based on the information you want to, to look at. And you'll see the changes. Turn it off when ready. So practice these things until you get really comfortable. Um, no matter what program you use, Google Sheets or Excel, you'll want to practice to make sure that you're confident in some of these basic skills. Notice that down, all the way down at the bottom left, there's a plus sign. And this plus sign allows you to add additional sheets to a Google Sheet workbook. So I can add that plus sign add some new sheets, and notice that I've got some blank work areas, and I can still go back to my original sheet. If you've worked with spreadsheets before, you 
will realize that there are also some ways that you can perform some simple calculations without having to pull out your calculator or pull out a calculator and to um, come up with the answers. Um, one really easy way is that you can um, go to those more commands and find functions. And some really common functions are going to be listed. So you can do things like find the sum or better yet, the average of these students and their, and their lexiles. Or I could come over to the total words read, again, go back to my functions. highlight the numbers, and find a total. Get really comfortable with things like finding an average, finding a total, finding a difference, or multiplying if you like. And again, these are skills that you'll want to practice. And I've got a bunch of um, practice sheets built into this webinar. You can take this practice sheet and make a copy of it as many times as you like so that you can, you can practice. I've got a page within this workbook called auto filling. You'll want to learn how to auto fill. So I've, you'll see on this spreadsheet, I've got um, one column with days of the week. And I could keep typing and I typed in the words Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and I could keep typing those days of the week. But if I highlight the word Monday and then hit the control, or command on a Mac. So control if you're on a PC, command if you're on a Mac, and then I can go to the blue dot and you'll see a little hand if I'm doing everything correctly and then start and then drag the column out without having to type all of that information in. It just speeds things up so that you don't have to do as much typing. So it works for things that are in a logical sequence like days of the week, months of the year, the date, so highlight and click, highlight and click and then drag. And if you get all of your clicking correct and highlighting, then you'll see the, the cross and you'll be able to, um, to drag things out. So practice with that as well. It's another wonderful tip and skill that you can put to work right away in Google Sheets. So one more basic skill I'd like to mention before moving on is this green button here at the top right. So right now, the particular sheet that I'm working in is shared only with me. So I'll hit that button and you'll see the window opens. It says to share with others or share with other people. I can get a hyperlink or I can enter uh, email addresses and share this spreadsheet with other people directly without having to send a separate email with the sheet attached. So I can add in as many names as I need to and notice that there's a pencil on the side. So it means that I'm giving this person access to this sheet to edit the file. I can hit the drop down if I decide that this is not a sheet that I want to allow everyone to edit directly, I can change the level of access that I want each person to have. So if I want some feedback about this worksheet, this Google sheet, but I don't necessarily need 
someone to go in and make any changes, I could give them comment access or I could allow them to only view the file. And then hit send. The person that I'm sharing the page with will get a notification that I've shared this page with them, this sheet with them. And you'll notice I get a notification that the worksheet has been shared. All right, any questions? I'll pause for a moment and just see if you have any, any questions about some of the basics. You'll notice that the, these basic skills, these are your level one skills. These are the skills that you need to become a level one Google certified educator. So if you are working on becoming a Google certified educator, these are the skills that you will practice in a boot camp a level one boot camp, And then you'll also see as we go along in this webinar, you'll notice that if you're working um, towards becoming a level two Google certified educator, that there are some level two skills contained within this webinar as well. So practice using this sheet. This is a great way to practice. I've got the list of skills here and then also a sheet for you to practice. So next up, I'm going to share some tips with you. Okay, so yeah, I was just trying to get that first tip. To, uh, email. I'm, in a I'm webinar. going to. Okay, thank you. Um, recommend that you use the readily available templates. Now, these templates are going to be available if you go in through sheets.google.com or if you go in through the waffle. So, if you find um, starting out that using Google Sheets is kind of a daunting task use the um, sheets that are readily available in the template gallery. You can make a copy of these um, sheets and they copy directly to your Google Drive. See, mine is running a little slow. Here we go, template gallery. And you'll see that there's a variety of different templates available. So there's education, personal, and more, travel planner, a weekly timesheet for tracking and, and more. And I'll show you how you can get more templates later on. But use these templates that are readily available. So the expense report is a great way to track expenses when you travel or um, expenses throughout the year. If you're a classroom teacher, um, track the things that you spend uh, money on the resources that you purchase. And I don't have to do anything here other than to just start using it because it automatically made a copy for me. So my first real big tip is to start using those readily available templates. Another um, thing that you will want to use, a second tip, is to use the artificial intelligence in Google Sheets to get quick insights into data. Now, this saves time, it saves effort, and it sh can show you things that you've missed. Um, I was a loyal uh, Microsoft Excel user for many years, and I do still use Microsoft Excel, but what has really sold me on Google Sheets is the amount of machine learning and artificial it intelligence that Google has built in. It's really, really wonderful, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, if you make a copy of the practice spreadsheet, what you get is a data sheet that looks similar to the kinds of data that you can download from any one of, of our assessment platforms. You'll, ha you'll see some teacher information, student information with IDs and things of that nature. You'll see scores where you can compare student scores on different exams, and then um, a breakdown on the different parts of the exam. But if you drop down to the bottom right and hit explore, 
This is the artificial intelligence and the machine learning I was talking about. Um, without any effort other than to click the Explore button, Google will allow you to query this sheet. It'll allow you to ask a question. Uh, you can also format this sheet to make this information a lot easier to read and to process visually. You can pull up pivot tables, and I've got a separate slide about pivot tables later, but I might as well go ahead and show you this now. So now I've got a pivot table right in front of me, um, providing me with some information about the different classes and how they performed on this exam and much, much more. Uh, this feature of Google Sheets just keeps getting better um, as they've gone along. It's been around for about a little over a year. And um, each time I click the Explore button, it seems as if Google is building a little bit more in here. So you can go in and get a lot of great information. So it begins to suggest the types of, of charts that you can use and much more. And you can do this, you don't need that specific spreadsheet, you can um, use it with any spreadsheet. So you'll see the GIF that I have, uh, the GIF image on the slide, and you can also check out the step-by-step -step directions for this as well. So I've got that built in to this presentation, the description of what it means to get instant insights into your information, and then also the step-by-step -step directions. One, two, three, four. So if you, when you work with spreadsheets or when you work with technology, if you like step-by-step -step directions, those are here as well. A third tip that I want to recommend is that you protect spreadsheet content. And this is important for all of us in uh, K-12 environments when you work with sensitive data, or when you want to be the only person making changes or updates to a spreadsheet, you'll want to use the protect content feature built into Google Sheets. And you'll see, again, I've got a practice sheet for you to play with, and then the step-by-step -step directions also. So describing what you're doing and how to do it. So you're going to open your uh, sheet, go to Data, Protected Sheets and Ranges. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So I can highlight some, some information. If this was the information in my sheet that I didn't want anyone to go in and change, I can go into uh, Data and Protected Sheets and Ranges. and then set permissions so that um, only I would be able to change this, this uh, part of the spreadsheet. Now keep in mind, even when you um, set editing permissions, people can still make copies of a spreadsheet and so on. So it is important to keep that in mind. But setting um, editing permissions within a protected range can really assist you in um, protecting sensitive information. Um, another great feature built into Google Sheets is to get formulas automatically. Uh, it will save you a lot of time, and then that way you don't have to memorize or remember formulas. In Excel, you really needed to memorize those formulas. It was really important because if you forgot something, then you'd have to go back and look it up. But like I was saying earlier, in that Explore feature of Google Sheets, it's pretty cool. It will not only give you the suggested information, or the suggested way to use the sheet. Let me let everything load up here. So I'll go to explore. All 
All right, here it comes. It may take a moment, bear with me. And I can, again, I can go in, I can um, ask a question about this data. So I can say, for example, um, or I could go with the average of units or the average of the total for each region. I can go with the question that um, Google suggests, or I could say um, units by region and get an answer. So I can um, type in a simple query and get an answer to my question. Um, the nice part about this is that if you look right underneath my um, chart, is that you'll see a link and it says C formula. And if I click that, here's the formula um, that produced this data. And then I can drag and drop this right into my sheet. So like I said, this is a feature that has made me a believer in Google Sheets. Um, you can, so you can type a simple query, you can query your sheet, and then Google Sheets will um, give you the formula through the Explore feature. Now I could come in, take this formula, um, start making changes to it if I needed to, and a lot more. So here's my, here's my formula in the um, function area. All right, if this tip is not going to low, I may just go forward and then, if possible, come back to it. Another one is that you can brand your spreadsheets with images. So if you've got a department logo or a school logo or you've got um, a mascot, you can brand your spreadsheets. Um, it's very easy now to go ahead to go in and just add uh, images into your spreadsheet and you can take a look. Off, um, go through this one. I'll let you look at it. And if you want to check out the practice shed, uh, sheet and the step-by-step -step directions, you'll, you'll see those as well. I'm going to let this one uh, load up a little bit. Um, you can also receive notifications when people have made changes to a spreadsheet. So if you're a school administrator or if you work in a department and you have teammates or you work at a school and your grade level teammates are working to complete a spreadsheet, there it goes, um, you can go in and set notifications on a spreadsheet so that it will send you an email when someone makes changes. And so if you're working on a team project or a grade level team project, it's a great feature so that you know when a teammate has finished a task or just to know as an administrator if, if something has changed on a spreadsheet. And to do that, you're going to go to the tools menu this time and notification rules. So tools, notification rules, and you'll see that I can set up a notification when any changes are made and I can decide if I wanna get that email right away or if I want Google to send me an email once a day about the changes that have happened uh, to a spreadsheet. So if you've got a, um, a departmental spreadsheet and it's updating or a grade level spreadsheet and it's updating through a Google form or it's updating a few times a day as um, data is coming in, you can get an email once a day or uh, right away if you like, anytime uh, changes to that spreadsheet happen. So I really like that feature and I suggest that you use it as well. Um, you'll also wanna use keyboard shortcuts. They save time, they cut down on errors when you're working with data and there's a, an entire link of shortcuts. Let me uh, jump back, here we go. So you can do things like select an entire column, 
Select an entire row. I'll pull these up so that you can see them. Here they are. If you learn the keyboard shortcuts, they can help you out a lot. Um, notice that the shortcuts for the PC are going to be slightly different from the shortcuts for the Mac, but they can be super helpful as well. And again, if you have a lot of data that you're working with, you can cut down on errors. Uh, I think I showed you the pivot table feature earlier. I like to just go ahead and go and use the explore feature because it really makes those pivot tables really painless to pull up. Um, the step-by-step -step directions, again, or to go to the explore area and show you how to pull up uh, the pivot tables. If you go into the um, directions, the step-by-step -step directions, there's even a template that you can work with. So the easy way to pull the pivot table is to use the explore feature. I'm going to step it up and move a, a little bit more quickly through um, the remainder of the slides just to leave some question and answer time. But you can also create filtered views. I've got a slide that will show you how to save a filtered view. And uh, if you save a filtered view, if you find that you have to keep turning on a filter on a spreadsheet, it can save you a bunch of time so that you don't have to keep turning that filter on. Just go to data and filtered views. And you can save a view so that you can pull that up anytime that you want. A few other tips that you may want to check out at your own pace on, um, within the presentation, you can create a heat map using conditional formatting and then also um, you can, I'll show you how to split data into columns. So I've got the, the short video um, linked into the slide and then also the step-by-step -step directions. I'm gonna talk just for a couple of minutes about add-ons. And I think that there are a few add-ons that when you're getting started with Google Sheets, you may want to check out. Now, what are add-ons? They allow you to add enhancements or extras to Google Sheets. The nice part is that you don't need to, um, you don't need any permissions to install, and they typically add additional menus and tools and sidebars to your Google Sheet. And so to get add-ons, when you're in Google Sheets, you'll want to find the part of the menu that says add-ons, and then you'll see an option where you can get add-ons. So in Sheets, it's this area. Now, a few add-ons that are really, really helpful. One is called Easy Query. Um, Easy Query will create a totally new sheet that only shows the data that you want and it will stay up to date. So the sheet that you create off the main sheet will update as you update the main sheet. So the way that this works is that I'll make a copy. And I'll hit my add-on. If, if you're installing it for the first time, it's going to ask for permissions to access things in your Google Drive and to work with Google Sheets. Go ahead and click through all of the permissions and all of the messages. And then once it's installed, you'll see an item in your add-on menu called Easy Query. And so I'll create a sheet. I'm going to create a single sheet about just one part of the data. And 
and I'll set things up so that um, I will pull, I'll create a new sheet where column A is equal to a certain value. And then I'll go ahead and create. And so Easy Query is now going to create a brand new sheet for me with only the data from one specific class. Um, and I could go ahead and create other brand new sheets within this workbook um, just based off of that one uh, column value in one column. So Easy Query is a great one. There are lots and lots of uses for Easy Query. The Google Sheets template gallery earlier in the presentation, I promised that you would, I would show you some more templates. So the Google Sheets template gallery is an additional add-on. And I've got this one installed. And I'm going to scroll down to where I can access it. And it's an add-on, and it will bring you to a bunch more templates that you can use. Remember, use templates. That was one of the tips that I recommended early in the webinar because it will save you a ton of time. The nice part about this add-on is that so if you find a list or a template, it's very easy. Click on it, and it automatically copies it to your Google Drive so that you can start using it right away. Another one is the QR code generator. I won't demo this one, but um, if you install the QR code generator and you have um, employee or student names and IDs in a spreadsheet, you can create um, QR code badges for, um, for your employees or for students. And that can have a ton of different uses, or you could create QR codes for um, a classroom checkout library. The last um, add-on that I'll share is called Practice Tools, and it's got actually a lot of um, tools built into one add-on. So under Power Tools, it will do things like merge cells, uh, compare cells, contains the solutions to uh, daily tasks in Google split cells, and a lot more. Main areas. The smart toolbar with quick fix. All right, so I'm going to pause at this point and just find out what you think about all of this. Hopefully, um, this webinar is helping you to see Google Sheets in a different way. I just heard somebody using the um, G Suite training extension, uh, which is Fantastic, I, I truly recommend it. And again, I also recommend our level one Google Certified Educator Boot Camps if you're getting started with Google Sheets. A lot of those basic skills that I talked about early in the webinar are covered in our boot camps. So if you haven't had a chance to register and attend one of those, I, I definitely recommend that you go in to go sign me up and check one of those out because you will get coverage on the basics with spreadsheets. And so at this point, I want to hear from you and just find out about what you think about all of this and what questions you have. All right, uh, Martha, thanks so much. That I hope that you did find this really informative, and I hope that you're thinking about Google Sheets in a way that will entice you or inspire you to open Google Sheets and start using it a little bit more and some of the um, really cool things that Google has built into it. 
Somebody's uh, got a comment from Angela, uh, like Excel, except better. I agree. I think that what Google has done um, with Google Sheets has come a long way in the last uh, year, and they have uh, gotten it to the point where I think it could be, it's, it's, it's not too far off to say that it's a better tool than Excel. Um, thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Um, you, you like the tips. Um, I really enjoy providing these, and I don't mind keeping these coming as long as you all want to um, want to learn more about uh, Google and especially Google Sheets. Okay, um, Erin is saying that uh, she liked the cheat sheets and also the, um, the G Suite trainer. Definitely pass that on. Uh, your faculty members that have um, questions for you about Google Sheets will really appreciate it, and you will too. All right, Dr. Slan likes the uh, likes the templates. Um, thank you, Dr. Slane. I really appreciate the um, feedback. And as long as you enjoy, like I said, you enjoy this content, I'll keep it coming. All right. I just want to, um, at this point, thank you so much for all the support and feedback. Thank you to everyone who joined in. I will stay around and answer any questions that you have and just listen to feedback that you have for me about this webinar. And again, um, this webinar is part of a series. The next webinar that I'm going to do is on March 13th, and it'll be about how to create flipped videos. And then I will um, be bringing you a webinar about Google Data Studio, which is a really fun way to use Google Sheets. And again, um, we'll keep these webinars coming from Tech Integration as long as you enjoy the content. So thank you and have a great afternoon.